going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you the CWO Premier League recap. Opening round just closed up. We're going to go ahead and take a look real quick at the 16 clans that made it to the playoffs. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you for making it this far. Now, eight of these clans have now been eliminated. We're going to go ahead and take a look at each war and break down exactly what happened and who is now going to be advancing on to the semifinals. And just what an overall crazy weekend that it was. I mean, from 11v11 triples, Town Hall 10 triples, we had five 10v10s in one war. It was just complete madness. But what we're going to do is start off with the war that everyone's talking about, starting off at the bottom this time with Jayoff taking on Dark Avengers. All right, guys, here it is right here. Jayoff taking on Dark Avengers. What you're looking at on your screen is one of the three 11v11 triples that Jayoff managed to pull off this war. And basically, I mean, this war was literally the clash of the titans uh, that went down. Both clans performed. I mean, both clans had an amazing war, starting off with Jayoff. Again, they had three 11 v 11 triples and five guys. They had five 10 v 10 triples. So basically their 11 v 10s, they did go five for five on dips. So that cleared half of the town hall 10s. The other uh, five town, uh, town hall 10s were cleared via town hall 10 triple, which opened up the opportunity to have three 11 v 11 triples. Could not believe what I saw when I went and recorded um, over in, uh, over inside this war. Dark Avengers, talking about Dark Avengers, guys, they put on a show themselves. They went eight for eight on their 11 v 10 dips. They went 100% this war, and they also pulled off two Town Hall 10 triples. So it's not not that they played a bad, I mean, they could not have played a better war when you really think about it. But the score, again, did end 89 to 86. 86 stars DA managed to put up. That would have beat, just to put it into perspective, 86 stars would have beat any other clan that went into the playoffs in the opening round. So again, just a, a great overall uh, job to both clans, but Jayoff looking to take the victory again, 89 to 80, 89 to 86 with a three star differential, getting three 11 v 11 triples as you guys are seeing on the screen right now and picking up five 10 v 10s. Could not believe it. Good luck to them in the rest of the season and DA good luck in the future to you guys. Amazing war. All right, next up we have WHF2 took on Ledich Tug. The war ended in a tie, 83 to 83. WHF2 walking away with the victory. Again, the score was tied and they won by 0.13%. Ledich Tug did have an opportunity to pick up an extra star to end the war, but they did have a last minute dip fail with just a couple minutes left in the war. Could not believe how it went down. Just to go over the stats real quick, we had WHF2 as far as their 11v10 uh, 11 v 10 dip game. They went five for eight, not the best performance. They did have three dip fails. However, they made up, they made up ground when they picked up two Town Hall 10 triples and let it took they had two dip fills. They went six for eight, 11 v 10, and they did manage to get one 10 v 10 triple themselves, but just an amazing war. And this was one of the, one of the predictions in the, in the prediction video. I did get this one wrong. I did go with Ledich took WHF two throughout pretty much throughout the entire season. They have 
to the surprise of many, have been the underdogs. A lot of people have been saying WHF2 was not going to go anywhere this season. They have continued to prove people wrong time and time again, proving myself wrong as I actually went with Lettish Tug to take the victory. That did not happen. WHF2 came into this war to play. Now, again, despite their uh, five for eight on dips, again, they made up the ground with the two 10v10 triples. They also did very well um, on their 10v11 uh, doubles on the 11s. And again, winning 83 to 83 just by just barely 0.13%. Again, one last minute dip fail from Ledich Tug secured the victory for WHF2, who will be moving on. What you guys are looking at on your screen right now, we do have Hilda, who did a really nice queen walk, mass drag attack, starting with the queen over on the bottom left-hand side around 8 o'clock, wrapping around, getting all four air defenses, starting with the drags over at 9, just to take out all those air targeting defenses. King was there to go ahead and tank. Amazing attack uh, from Hilda on this was, again, one of their two 10v10 triples of the war. And congratulations for moving on to the semifinals. All right, now we're going to go ahead and check out an attack from the Marshall's Nation versus CZ X Knights War. This one is really interesting. Um, Marshall's Nation did get the win 83 to 82. So they flat out, they did beat CZ X Knights. However, comparing Marshall's Nation to where they were earlier on into the season in Premier and middle of the season... Compared to where they are now, remember, in week 11, they had a very narrow margin victory um, over Terps Win Big. And same thing in this CZX Knights War. Remember, Marshall's Nation being in the first seed slot, CZX Knights was the eighth seed slot in the Elixir Conference. They have got to find their sweet spot again. Uh, once we go over the stats real quick, it'll make more sense what I'm saying. Now, I'm not picking on Marshall's Nation. I got a lot of buddies over there. I got nothing but love for MN, but they have to get back to where they were earlier on to the season, moving into the semifinals. Real quick, Marshall's Nation on their 11v10 game, very similar to WHF. Marshall's Nation did go five for eight, so they had three dip fails. However, they made up territory, getting two 10v10 three stars. Um, CZX Knights was a little bit better on their dip game. They did go six for eight, so they only had two dip fails. Where CZX Knights fell flat was in the 10v10 department, where they had zero 10v10 triples of the war. So again, congratulations to Marshall's Nation. They are going to be moving on with the victory in this war, but they have to find where they were earlier on because uh, they're going to start facing some very tough clans. We all know how monster of a clan Marshall's Nation is. They just have to get back on track to where they were. What you guys are looking at is just a beautiful queen charge, uh, mass dragon attack, Hoppy taking down Baxter on this 10v11 attempt right here, and just got beautiful value from that queen charge as the compartment was very, very wide open. Got amazing value. Queen was still up, uh, survived almost the entire raid right there. So have a few dragons up this one's going to end at 59 percent again amazing amazing value from that queen charge and congratulations to marshall's nation for continuing their playoff journey and best of luck to czx knights in the future Okay, next up we have Dark Looter X versus Emphatic Fury and what was a crazy, crazy war. The final DLX walking away with the victory. 85 to 83 was the final. So basically what broke down this war, um, I mean DLX more or less owned it throughout. We have DLX as far as their dip game going six for seven. Uh, they only had one 11 v10 dip fail. They also managed to produce two uh, 10 v10 triples. Emphatic Fury went six for eight. So they did have two dip fails and they did pull off one 10 v10 three star as well. Uh, the difference was 
up to the last minute of the war, where DLX actually struggled was the 10v11 game. Uh, this base right here uh, that we have Steph hitting, this base, one minute left in war, actually was only one star. The Town Hall 10s were not able uh, to get two stars on this base. However, the score was 83 to 83, only one attack left. DLX already was winning on percentage, so they could have dipped down and grabbed a star, uh, or potentially grabbed a star off of a Town Hall 10 to make it 84-83. They went ahead, again, since they already had the victory in the bag uh, with 83-83, one attack left, uh, already winning on percentage. They went ahead and went with a 11 v 11 attempt. And as you see right here, completely ends up smoking this base, getting the 11 v 11 three star. So what was going, so, and they netted two stars off this one attack. Again, this base was only one star up until the very end. So congratulations to DLX for moving on into the semifinals. Best of luck to Emphatic Fury going on into the Future. They played a very tough war, and everyone knows how tough any of these Dark Looter uh, clans are. So Emphatic Fury put up a hell of a fight. We're not able to pull it off. Again, best of luck to you guys. The final, 85-83. to 83, DLX moving on into the semifinals. All right, next up, checking out Pinoy Bandito's one versus We Are Spartans. And we have We Are Spartans walking away with the victory, 84 to 83. We Are Spartans will be moving on into the playoffs. Uh, to go ahead and break down the stats, where Pinoy Bandito's also struggled was in the 10 v 11 game. They were not able to get uh, the We Are Spartans number one. Town Hall 11 doubled with the Town Hall 10, so they ended up having to burn one of their Town Hall 11 hits on it uh, in an 11v11 attempt, did not get the three star, or only managed to get the two star on it. So basically, Pro Benditos ended up going five for seven in the 11v10 game. Uh, that other remaining hit is what got burned on the We Are Spartans number one. However, they did manage to pull off two 10v10 three stars. So not too bad of a war all in all. Uh, they just have to be able to execute the 10v11s going into the future. We Are Spartans, where they struggled, was in the dip game going five for eight. So they did have three dip fails, but they did have three 10 v 10 three stars so big props to them back in week 11 when they ward forge from steel they also had three 10 v 10s so this clan is red hot right now Get, again getting the victory 84 to 83 moving on into the playoffs what you guys are seeing right here is we just had a beautiful sui hero lalo uh from raul taking on d zone um and just a beautiful Lalo starting off at 3 o'clock. Uh, just a pair of hounds with a bunch of haste. You see that wad of loons right there inside that heal spell. All collapsing. Still has a hound on that last remaining air defense. He's got about 15 loons left over uh, left in this attack. So again, just an amazing attack from Raul as this was one of their three 10v10 three stars of the war. Good luck in the rest of uh, the playoffs and good luck to Pinoy Bandito's one, a very tough clan, played a very good war and good luck to you guys in the future. All right, next up, taking a look at the King Jeffrey versus Hindustan War in what was a very, very close war when we go ahead and break down the stats. King Jeffrey walking away with the victory in the only inner division matchup. Again, both of these clans uh, coming from the balloon division uh, under the gold conference. King Jeffrey getting the victory 84 to 83. KJ is moving on in the playoffs. Hindustan will be going home. Uh, one interesting stat, although King Jeffrey got the uh, plus one star victory, they did, however, lose on total destruction by about 1%. Uh, just an interesting stat uh, they want to share with you guys. As far as the dips went, where Hindustan really struggled was the 11v10 dips. They did have 
three dip fills, only going five for eight, where KJ made up ground going seven for eight, only having one dip fill. Both uh, KJ and Hindustan did have uh, two 10v10 triples of the war, so their Town Hall 10s did a very good job as far as the 10v11 game goes, and their Town Hall 10s both picking up. So very similar, again, the only difference was KJ going seven for eight, Hindustan going five for eight, but in a crazy course of events, uh, King Jeffrey did lose um, as far as total destruction. So I thought that was very interesting. What you guys are seeing on your screen right now was just a beautiful Queen Charge Lalo. Just got amazing value uh, from that Queen right there. As you can see, this base got completely wrecked. All kinds of loons up. Even has a Hound up. Uh, the only two air targeting defenses left is the Expo and that Archer Tower. So really good job to Alex taking down uh, COC Game Freak. Again, KJ will be moving on into the playoffs. Hindustan, best of luck to you guys in the future. Uh, it's a very, very good clan. Just have to tighten up the dip game. Uh, but they are producing Town Hall uh, 10 3 stars. And their 10 v 11 game is on point. Again, good luck to you guys in the future. Congratulations to King Jeffrey. All right, next up, taking a look at the Forge from Steel versus Grumpy Old Men War. And I'm telling you guys, Grumpy Old Men walking away with the victory over FFS. They're going to be moving on in the playoffs. Forge from Steel is going home. Uh, the final, 85 to 83. Uh, real quick, going over the stats. Uh, Forge from Steel on the dip game going 6 for 8. We did have two dip fails, and we did manage one 10v10 three-star. Uh, where Grumpy Old Men really outshined us, um, not only did they go 7 for 8 in the 11v10 dips, but they did manage two 10v10 three stars this war, and I truly do mean this from the bottom of my heart, congratulations uh, to Grumpy Old Men. In my predictions video, I did predict that Forge and Steel was going to win this war. That did not happen. And as far as the predictions, I did go six for eight. Uh, this was the other, uh, the second war, or uh, the only other war that my prediction was wrong. And I'm telling you, grumpy old men brought it. They were clicking the entire war from start to finish. Their nines came out firing. Uh, they did very well on the 10v11 game. And again, going seven for eight on dips, not leaving a lot of uh, room for error. And they, again, they took advantage of it. Uh, do not, like I said, do not sleep on this clan, guys. Grumpy Old Men is a solid clan. They are playing to win. Uh, they were in the seventh seed. Again, FFS going home. And you have Grumpy Old Men moving on in the playoffs. And I truly do mean this. Congratulations and good luck to you guys in the rest of the playoffs in the semifinals. And best of luck to my clan, Forge from Steel, in the future. Uh, GOM, again, congratulations, guys. All right, last and final war uh, that went down, FYSB taking on One Hive Genesis, first seed versus the eighth seed. We have FYSB walking away in what was a bizarre victory at 80 to 80, winning by exactly 0.1%. Uh, part of the reason why the stars were so low, before we even cover the stats, is I guess there was a weight discrepancy uh, where FYSB had a base that I believe was a, a, a couple K heavier than one of OHG's uh, Town Hall 10s. So they basically left one Town Hall 10 on each side untouched. Just to, I just want to get that out there. I thought that was pretty important. Now, real quick to cover the stats, FYSB, check this out. On their dip game, they went four for eight. Uh, they did have four dip fails, OHG going four for seven. They had three dip fails. Um, 
what ended up happening is OHG really struggled with FYSB's number two base. They were not able to get that base two starred with one of their Town Hall 10s, so they had to end up burning uh, a Town Hall 11 hit on it in what was going to be an, uh, an 11 v 11 triple attempt, but they end up getting, I believe it was only 55 or 56 percent two star. So they netted the star, but did not get the percent. So a very low percent uh, two star on their 11 v 11 attempt on FYSB's number two base. Uh, FYSB and OHG both had two 10 v 10 three stars. But again, what a bizarre war. Uh, when it rains, it pours. I mean, both clans seem to pretty much struggle throughout. Um, OHG did have to dip a couple of FYSB's Town Hall 9 bases, but that did not, I mean, even though they had to dip, that did not uh, determine the outcome of this war. But however, what a close war it was. What a bizarre war. And both clans would tell you that. But we do have FYSB again in the first seed uh, slot in the Gold Conference. Moving on in the playoffs, OHG will be going home in what was a very hard fought war. Um, I mean, they gave it, they gave it their all, but FYSB going on top, winning by 0.1%, guys, 80 to 80. So good luck to FYSB. Moving on in the playoffs, best of luck to OHG in the future. All right, guys, before we end the video, here is a look at the last eight clans standing in CWO Premier in the conference semifinals. Starting off at the top, FYSB versus We Are Spartans. Next, we have King Jeffrey will be challenging Grumpy Old Men. Marshall's Nation will be taking on Dark Looter X. And rounding off at the bottom, WHF2 versus J Off. And again, the last eight clans standing in CWO Premier. I cannot wait to see see what the outcome in these four wars are going to be and again congratulations to all of the clans that have made it this far and i want to thank you for watching this video and make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel if you have not already as always this is Riggs from clashing ffs and i'll see you in the very next video